Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and I'm on the 8.9 test server going to show you the new tier 10 German tank destroyer. This is a turreted tank with an autoloader. It is the Waffenträger Alf E100. This tank literally is a glass cannon with currently the highest damage per reload in the magazine of any tank in the game. If you want to play a very unique German tank destroyer and the biggest glass cannon in the game capable of devastating its opponents, then stay tuned because this might be the thing for you. And equally, if you have no interest in getting this tank, I'll hopefully explain to you how to deal with these things if you ever get engaged by one. So the Waffenträger has 2,200 hit points. It weighs just shy of 100 tons, which means don't be ramming these tanks. And also be very afraid of these tanks ramming you as it does have a 40 km an hour top speed limit. Weighing in at 100 tons you'd expect this thing to get some kind of engine and yes it gets the same engine as the E100 and the uh, Jagdpanzer E100 meaning that this thing can shift. Having a brake horsepower to ton ratio of 1.2 even when fully equipped with a super heavy spool liner means that this thing is, is fairly mobile. Now the tank's top speed limit as I mentioned is 40 kilometers an hour and it has excellent track traverse speed of 30 degrees a second. Now this tank does have the same hull as the E100 Jagdpanzer with 200 millimeters at the front but remember the lower plate is of E100 standard, 120 millimeters at the side although tracks cover most of the hull meaning that they should absorb quite a lot of the damage and if anything's ever going to be stupid enough to shoot you in the rear hull of the tank you do have 150 millimeters of armor. Now interestingly this tank does have a fully traversed turret capable of going the whole way around. However, don't expect the turret to be able to take any punishment. It has 20 millimeters of frontal armor, 10 at the side and 8 at the rear. What this means is that if you're engaging one of these tanks, shooting HE at its turret is a very viable option. You're likely to do full damage even if your shot goes in at an awkward angle and wreck the tank, as I'm going to be showing you in some of the gameplay. Now the turret does have a very good traverse speed for such a heavy tank of 24 degrees a second. When you combine this with the track traverse speed of 30 degrees, that gives this the ability to rapidly re-engage targets from different angles. Really, even though this thing does have the hull of an E100, flexibility that you get with the track traverse speed and the, the rapid turning nature of the turret for such a heavy tank, it really performs like a very much more mobile E100 tank. Very interestingly, one of the things that not many people are giving this tank credit for is the fact that it does have 420 meters view range. Now I'm not sure if this is intended or if it's something that will change, but this tank has now got the equal highest view range in the game. And if you use binoculars on this tank, you're gonna be able to see your enemies at very far distances. That's pretty crazy, I know that most Tier 10 heavies and even tank destroyers have 400, but having that little bit extra, that extra 5% can probably make all the difference. So now you know the characteristics of the armor and the tank's mobility, let's take a look at the very interesting guns that are included on this tank. And that's right, I did say guns because that's because there are two options on this beast. You can either use a 120mm gun or a 150mm gun. Now that 128 is not the same as on the German tier 9 uh, heavies such as the E75 and the VK4502B or the mouse. It is the tank destroyer variety of the gun that you might be already familiar with that is on the Jagdtiger. So there are two options, 128mm and 150mm. They are very different and very unique and they should have different kind of playstyles attached to them. So interestingly, the two different guns have different capabilities of the amount of shells they can hold in their magazines. The 128mm can hold 6 shells, whereas the 150mm can hold 4 shells. Also, the time that it takes between the shots is different. The 128mm has only 2 seconds between shots, whereas the 150mm has 3 seconds between shots. Now, just to go over the rounds per minute of these guns, it's very interesting. When you use the 128mm on the Waffenträger, it's, it's rather underwhelming the rate of fire. You only get 5.14 rounds a minute. That's less than the Jagdtiger as an example. And it's less than the previous Waffenträger that you get with the ALF Panzer IV. As we can clearly see here, the 128mm gets 5.61 rounds a minute. 
on the tier 9 tank. Interestingly, however, the 15cm keeps the same rate of fire as the previous tank. It is even slightly increased to 4.07. When we compare this to the E100 gun, which I'm showing here, it has 33% more DPM than an E100. So interestingly, because of the fact that the 128mm fires 6 shells per magazine, whereas the 150mm fires 4 shells per magazine, it takes the 128mm 60 seconds, whereas the 150mm reloads in 50 seconds. Now there are large penetration differences between these guns. The 128 gets 276mm of penetration with its regular AP rounds. That's, that's very significant. That's very nice penetration to have. 352 APCR rounds, I will highlight here. They are not heat rounds, which is massively beneficial as you will still get that degree of normalization with the APCR rounds. Yet only 65 millimeters of penetration with your HE rounds. However, I would never really recommend loading HE rounds with 128 millimeter because of the low caliber nature of the gun. Now the 15 centimeter is a mirror of the E100, 235 millimeters of penetration with its regular AP rounds, which is very underwhelming. 334 with heat, which is enough to blast through most tanks in the game, but you're definitely going to have to pay for it. You will be paying 6,000 credits per shot, so that means that you're paying 24,000 credits per clip if you want to fire heat with this monstrosity. But its HE ammo has got really nice penetration of 85 millimeters. Now there are accuracy differences between the guns. The 128 is much more accurate than the 15 centimeter, and wow, oh my god. An autoloader with 0.29 accuracy and an aim time of 1.5 with the 128mm, that's huge! Whereas the 15cm gets 0.34 and 1.9 aim time. Now irrespective of the 128, those are fantastic stats to have on the 15cm. 0.34 accuracy is great and 1.9 second aim time means that this tank can literally go full auto. It can unload its entire clip within 9 seconds of firing the first shot, giving this tank a potential average damage of 3000 per clip with the AP rounds when you use the 150mm. Interestingly, the 128mm, when you do 560 times by 6, that's 3360 potential damage per clip, and it will take you 10 seconds to unload the full clip from firing the first shell. So that literally means if you're able to, for example, get the back of the mouse, you're going to kill the mouse nearly every time within 10 seconds if you use that 128mm. That's pretty sick. If you thought it was annoying to have a Fosh unloading on you, it's probably going to be even more annoying to have one of these beasts unloading on you. I think it's pretty good the fact that this 15cm does not do 850 average damage like many of the other 155mm cannons on, for example, the Fosh 155, the T110 E3 and E4. That slightly balances this autoloader. It would be pretty damn crazy if this had a four shell magazine autoloader that did 850 damage. That would basically be a Fosh plus a third. But in fact, because the alpha damage on the 150 millimeter shells is actually only 750, that only gives this gun 450 extra damage per clip compared to the current Fosh 155. So a lot of people will be thinking, okay, which gun's better? Which gun do you think is better? Well, I'm going to say that they're both situational. I think that the 128mm takes a hell of a long time to reload, and that can be very frustrating if you, for example, fire two shots off and then you want to reload so that you're able to have the next engagement at full capabilities. Everyone knows when they play, for example, an AMX 5100, how annoying it is to have to fire off two shots and then spend the next 40 seconds reloading. Just to give you guys an idea about it, I'm showing you the AMX 5100 gun here. We can see that the time that it takes to do a complete loading with the 5100's 100mm is 50 seconds. And any of you 5100 drivers out there will realize that's a very long time. The 128 takes a full 60 seconds, so you're adding an extra 20% reload time compared to the 5100. When we look at the AMX 50 Fosh 155, we can see that's 50 seconds as well. So any of you 50 Fosh 155 drivers out there who are thinking, oh wow, I'd love to have that six shell magazine, be very afraid as to how long it is going to take to reload this tank if you only have to fire off a couple of shells. However, when you think that the AMX Fosh 155 has got three second aim time and it's so important to penetrate all of the shells, the fact that the aim time is so good 
and the accuracy is better on these German guns, it really gives them a huge speciality. I'm personally going to be inclined to go for the 15cm, because there's so many situations where you may only need to fire one, two or three shots, and then you're just going to have to reload anyway. Also, it's very interesting to think that, for example, the 15cm gun will fire 750, then it has to wait three seconds to fire another 750. So in fact, effectively, it's done 1,500 damage within three seconds. However, with the 128, you'll fire, wait two seconds, fire, wait two seconds, fire. Meaning that you've done 1,680 damage within four seconds. I think the 15 centimeter adds a little bit more flexibility with the lower reload time and the higher burst damage that it is capable of. But I think in some situations, just having that insane damage potential in the 128 millimeter will be very interesting. One thing is guys, is that it's very hard to showcase the potential of this tank on the test server because most of the other tanks that you're meeting at the moment are actually indeed the Waffenträger. Alfi 100s. And when you're engaging those, the effective tactic is to fire HE ammo at the turret of the enemy tank. And that's something that I'm just going to highlight as well, the fact that the 15cm does get rather cheap HE ammo, which you can literally use to harass the enemy. All you E100 drivers out there who like to fire HE ammo at the turrets of other tanks will know, imagine how troll that'll be if you can go out, fire four shells and pull back, and it doesn't even cost you the world. I think that both guns are a very viable choice, and it'll come down to you as a player as to which one you want to choose. But anyway, let's take a look at some gameplay. So here we go, we're looking at the Waffen Traeger on Ents. We can see that this is the kind of matchups that you get on the test server, mostly Waffen Traegers on the enemy team. So, you'll see that I am loading some HE rounds because with the penetration on the HE rounds of 85 millimeters, shooting into the turret of the enemy will be quite successful. However, this game will also showcase what the HE ammo do when you don't quite manage to hit the weak points of the enemy tanks. I could have fired a clutch shot there. I, I didn't quite feel that I could have made it. When you're in an autoloader, I do fire less speculatively than I usually would do. There we go. Oh, 1,047 damage, guys. 1,047 to the side of that WT-100s. Okay, I see this 183 looking at me, and I think he's coming round. I think he's coming round, so I kill this guy. Oh, I hit track this guy. Put one into him, and then I feel the force. I feel the force. <laughs> I get that sneaky 183 that could have killed me in one shot. I think if he rolls really, really, really high, I still think that they can kill you in one shot. Although I'm not sure. With the Hesh ammo. But that was that was pretty clutch. But you could see just how much devastation we were able to put out. We basically killed most of that Waffenträger. And we also had enough to clutch fire at the 183. The shell delay time and just the, the sheer massiveness of these shells, these 150 millimeter shells is it's quite ridiculous. One thing I will highlight is that in the replays it's not showing this reload counter. Now this is very interesting, if you go to my live stream of the 8.9 test server that I did, there is actually a reload timer that comes up. I'm not sure if it will come up in the replays that I'm showing you now or if that's something they haven't incorporated into the, uh, the replay system yet. But the Battle is developing. I kind of want to just stay safe. I want to let the enemies come towards me. I fire my first shot into him, only doing 279. Next one does 896, and I bounce two of his shells. Let's just pause it for a sec here. I bounced two of his shells that he fired at my upper plate, thinking very incorrectly that the Waffenträger has no hull armor. Its hull armor is fantastic. Its hull armor is an E100. Frontally, it's the same as an E100 Jagdpanzer. And at the back, it's the same as an E100 Jagdpanzer. The side is the same. Do not fire at the upper plate of the Waffenträger, or as you will see, as this guy just get horribly destroyed. So unfortunately, because we fired our HE shot into his track, it only did 200 and something. The second one we fire into his very weak turret armor, which does a huge amount of damage penetrating, and then the third one, we just could fire any way, really, that we wanted the tank because he had such low health. Now, I've still got one shell left. Let's see what I'm able to do with it. 
We put one shot into his tank. However, it only did 100 damage. What I think happened there, guys, is we actually hit his gun. And with the way that you see his gun pointing now, I'm not sure if we knocked out his gun. Looks like we have because he's not firing at us. I think he repaired and he fired another one. Fortunately for us, though, he seems to not want to try his chances with me. Or he's worried about getting flanked by my team. And so he's pulled back. We got absolutely brutalized there. We had full health at the start and we're down to now 600. And oh god, that 183 just hit that guy for 1,630 something health, leaving him on 15. And that's brutal. And that's what the 183 is going to still be able to do. Don't think, oh, this new autoloader is going to be ridiculously overpowered. Oh, wow, wow, wow. You're still going to be able to brutalize this tank. And I mean, let's be honest. If you're in a 183 and you see one of these, Hesh all here, Hesh all here, and that's one very, very dead Waffentrager. So this game's a little close now. We're outnumbering the enemy by two. And as you can see, all of our tank destroyers are, are wandering around. And this is really not what you want to be against, if we're honest. <laughs> Four, sorry, three Waffentragers, one tier 10, sorry, two 183mm British tier 10 tank destroyers. That's some serious destruction. If I was to meet this team on a live server, I would probably cry a little because your tank's not going to have much health. But as we can see there, the 183 decimates that gentleman there for 1,300 damage. Now, interesting situation, and this is what I really think that these autoloaders are very powerful for. I know that the 183 just fired. I, I could just plant a shell into his back and kill him. But I know because he's just fired that I'll be able to kill him afterwards. My priority is to kill the tank that could be reloaded for all I know. So what I do is plant one into the, uh, the E100 there. And then put a second one into the 183. And you can see they're very low amounts of delay on the autoloader shots. Less than three seconds. Well, three seconds with this uh, E100. Waffentrager. And we just decimate them. Guys, I would be so excited about using either the 150mm or using the 128mm and just going in for the lols. Can you imagine like killing four tanks with one clip? And that's very easily possible with this huge 750 alpha damage. I mean, I've seen people using the T57 Heavy kill three tanks in a clip, but of course they have to be below 400. Quite often tanks will have about, you know, 500 to 700 health. And those become in the territory for the 150mm to take out with one shot. And that's very exciting. And also, can you imagine just the miracle happens that you get a chance to shoot six tanks on low health with the 128mm with the six shell autoloader. That would just be a dream. I can't wait to see a replay where somebody manages to get not even a pentakill, gets a hexakill with six shells in this new tier 10 German tank destroyer. So anyway, I want to give you more gameplay. So I'm going to show a replay that you may have already seen because I released it a few days ago. But I'm going to go over it now with some post-game analysis. Whereas the previous time you saw it, it was live. So here we go, we're playing on Tundra. And as you can see, this time there are three artillery on the enemy team. So that means that I have to play fairly carefully. I have to watch out, try and remain in a bit of cover. Because, let's be honest, if your Waffentrager gets hit in the turret by an artillery, it's generally going to kill it in one shot. So, artillery players rejoice when these kind of tanks enter the uh, the battlefield. That's going to be a, a great benefit to you guys. So that 121 was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and we're able to just fire at the back of his tank because of the HE ammo, really. I know that it's... I don't even really have to aim very carefully firing these HE rounds at these low health targets. Now, this is where everything gets a bit interesting. So I'm just going to put it in half time. Because this happens very quickly. So, I saw... I'm just going to tell you guys what I was thinking. I saw that this guy was just going YOLO after the 50M to take him out. I knew that then this would pop up where all these tank destroyers were. So you see me reverse around the corner. This is a fairly strong location. Because of the rear-mounted turret, I still think that this tank, although its turret armor is garbage, it's still quite nice to reverse it round corners to be able to uh, at least hide the front of your tank or predominantly the side armor because you'd really rather have the enemy shoot your frontal armor. So, 
I managed to get myself into a situation hoping that the enemy were going to shoot my friend. That sounds a bit dark, really, but that's almost how you're going to have to play this tank on the live server. You can't afford to really get shot at in this tank because you're not going to bounce anything. So I saw an opportunity and I reversed round and now we're going to see what this 150 millimeter is capable of with our HE rounds. So this is half speed. So 973. 857. And then I should have got myself into a bit of a better position here. I fire another one. 456. Even though I believe where we hit on the enemy tank was here. So even hitting the side of the Waffentrager with the 150mm shell, still put 450 on him. So with those three shells, we did, uh, must have done just about 2,200 damage off the top of my head there. Absolute monster. And we fired it so quickly. That was half speed that you guys could see. Just absolutely brutal. Brutal. Absolute brutality that you can put on the enemy in this tank. It's absolutely wonderful. So I'm trying to avoid the artillery fire here. We see our artillery take out the enemy tank destroyer. And there we go. You just saw this Waffentrager get hit for 1,256 by an Object 261. I think that these tanks are going to be just so, so victimized by the artillery. The artillery are going to look at these tanks and just look at them as a big tasty XP pinata. And I would too if I saw them. I would absolutely love to shoot one of these. If you hit them anywhere in the turret, it's more or less going to wreck the tank. And if you splash anywhere on their upper hull, it's still going to do a large amount of damage. So I'm trying to use these rocks to at least hide myself a little bit. My thinking is, is that the enemy artillery usually will be located here. And we can also see there's one up here. So I try and get my tank in line with this rock to try and cover the most of it. And also try and hide behind here. One thing that I find is that artillery players will skim over and look for tanks that they think are, are not in cover. And then focus on them for about maybe 30 seconds to a minute. So if you can try and remain hidden between your shots, then you can sort of make artillery players not bother about trying to engage you. So here we can see that there are, are two Waffentragers coming up, but I see an opportunity. We'll take him out. And then we see another one coming up. And this is real time here. One, 892. Two, 824. Jeez. And we've still got one in the in the chamber, so to say. <laughs> or at least one shell left in the magazine is probably a more accurate description. And here you see me. I'm about to reverse around to try and get the final shot on this. No, I'm firing HE that I thought I could splash on him. And unfortunately, we hit the uh, side of the, uh, the ridge line there. But we're going to reload. That was another fairly successful clip. Doing, I'd say, another 2,000 damage. For our three shots, they hit the enemy. Now remember that these HE shells are kind of glorious in the fact that they do have 950 average damage. But the AP ammo still has got 750. So I'm shooting very low armored targets here with HE shells that kind of maybe makes this tank a little bit more impressive. But I'm more or less testing the flexibility of the tank and showing you what the HE ammo is capable of. So there we went looking for a shot on the 268. But he got taken out by the uh, the other Waffentrager. And I'm just hunting here. I'm mindful that the artillery might get us. But oh god, he's about to make a mistake. No, we didn't quite have a shot there. I try and shoot underneath the object 268, but we don't have a shot there either. I want to shoot this guy in the turret. He doesn't want to give it to me. I get spotted again. I want to try and avoid the artillery, but oh, here's my opportunity. 1,023. He's out. I fire at the side. I'm only doing 409, but I reload before he does. There's a double kill. So interestingly, our HE shell did 450 or 470. Not sure what it was to the side of that Waffentrager. So be careful with that. So I fired all my HE ammo. We did about another um, 2,000 damage there, or maybe it was only about 1,600 with another clip. Now we're going to reload some heat rounds to see how they perform.
We're just going to work our way into position. Notice that this tank does have pretty damn good gun depression for a tank destroyer. And also the turret just gives it such crazy flexibility. And oh, here we go. We spotted the ram. I wait till I'm reloaded. And then I pop round after him. I don't quite have the gun depression. Now I do. Oh, now I don't. Now I do. Now I don't. And we loop one there down onto his top of his hull armor, taking him out. And really, we overmatch his armor. That tank's got really low armor values. And even if we hit him at a horrendous angle, it's going to uh, take him out. We got very lucky there to be left on 15 health. But I'm quite happy to uh, get the fifth kill there and pretty much secure this game. I'm just staying hidden for a little while because I thought that the E4 would be aiming at me, waiting for my other teammate to move into position. Now that he's in position, I'm trying to spot. Remember that this tank has 420 meters view range. Combine that with binoculars and you're really going to be able to see most tanks in the game right up until your spotting range. Sorry, the maximum view distance, so to say. Which will be 440 or 445. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. So the E4 spotted me. I pull back. He fires. I move back up. Unfortunately, I don't quite have the gun depression here. As you can see, it's one of the limitations of the tank that the gun depression is great, but it's not amazing. So working ridge lines like this, sometimes it's a bit tricky to um, get into position. But that's it. That's all she wrote for the E4. Let's take a look at some post-game stats. So here we go. We can see we're able to do over 7,000 damage in that game with the 13 shots that we fired. We hit 12 out of the 13 shots, only donking one of the shells into a wall. We took three hits, and obviously of those three hits, three of them penetrated. We got fairly lucky to survive with 16 health as the potential damage that we actually received was more than the, uh, the tank was capable of taking. But we damaged five and destroyed five. And we also got 596 assistance damage, apparently. Getting 1,200 experience, that's non-premium, non-double, is a fantastic result in any tier 10 tank. And really, I'm really looking forward to trying this tank on the, on the regular server. I can't wait to be a little bit more opportunistic with this tank and let my teammates do more of the tanking for me. I think being able to come around a corner and do 3,000 potential damage to the enemy is just absolutely massive. Probably about eight times out of 10, you can clip an E100 if you penetrate all your shells. Five times out of 10, you can clip a mouse, meaning that this tank is capable of killing any tank in the game with one clip. And even if it misses a shell, it's still able to do 2,250 average damage, which is massive. That fact that you can miss a shell and still be able to decimate medium tanks is just brilliant. Think about meeting one of these, for example, in an M48 pattern. You're going to have to get up close and personal with this tank and bully it because you sure as hell can't flank it. It's got 30 degrees a second traverse speed as well as having 24 on the turret. It's going to be able to reposition its gun and shoot you before you can flank around it. And all it has to do is hit three of its four shells and it's going to be able to kill you in one clip almost every time. That's pretty damn brutal. The thing with the Fosh 155 is that if you can manage to get it to donk one of its shells, then it's still only able to do... Oh, oh, it's only able to do... 1,700 average damage to you. And quite often, then it's going to have to reload for such a long time that you're going to be able to pursue it and damage it really heavily. And that can make them play a little bit more passively. The fact that this Waffenträger gets the four shell autoloader is just absolutely massive. I'm also very interested to see how the 128 millimeter will perform, but really we can only get initial ideas as to how this tank will perform because the test server isn't the most, most reliable source. I think that the 128 millimeter will be a very interesting gun and I will be terrified of one of these if it's got a six round magazine. 128 millimeters, that's just absolutely insane. Having a Yag Tiger shoot you twice is bad enough. Having a Yag Tiger shoot you six times within 10 seconds, that's that's not World of Tanks. One thing that I worry about is that a lot of people keep throwing the term power creep into World of Tanks at the moment, the idea that the tanks are getting stronger and stronger and stronger. But that still doesn't mean that the old tanks won't be able to work. If you can catch this thing while it's reloading, for example, let's say that you're playing an FB4202. You're playing a British medium tank. You have Hesh ammo with your 105mm gun. You're going to be able to wreck this thing before it can reload, if you can catch it reloading. Even firing cheap Hesh into its turret, it really is just going to get decimated. 
limited. Artillery are going to be able to brutalize these tanks. Anything that can tactically load HE rounds is going to be able to brutalize this tank. This tank definitely has its drawbacks, but it does have its strengths. Anyway guys, I hope this review has been interesting for you. If it's been useful, please consider rating it down below, I'd really appreciate it. And why don't you let me know in the comments what you think of this tank? Do you think that it's overpowered as hell? Do you think the fact that it has quite a few drawbacks mean that it's going to be fairly balanced? Are you going to grind to get one? I expect a few people th will throw a few extreme terms around saying, oh I'm quitting the game because all of these autoloaders just make it pointless. I personally can't wait to get my hands on one of these and I'm going to treat them with the utmost respect. It's going to be like an even bigger game of chess trying to outplay these tanks and catch them when they're at their most vulnerable and to take advantage of their weaknesses. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.